There are 17 publicly known Department of Energy National Laboratories here in the U.S. And when we think about facilities like CERN in Switzerland and Fermilab in Illinois, those are just the laboratories that are well known. They both have particle accelerators, several accelerators in each lab. But did you know that there are more than 30,000 particle accelerators in operation around the world? Now you're probably wondering why in the world would we need that many particle accelerators? I don't know. Why do we need thousands of pyramids that exist in every inhabited continent on the planet? Some different sizes and some that have a purpose that is still rather a mystery to us. So we are going to take a closer look at a few of these laboratories, some here in the U.S. and others around the world, to gain a better understanding of the main agenda here, something that has been going on since the 1930s, really. Make no mistake, there is a bigger picture here, although it may take a ride into space just to see it. If we look at the Department of Energy's U.S. National Laboratories at a glance, we can see that there are 17 spread across the nation, some near major cities. Out of that 17, five of them are NET labs, or National Energy Technology Labs. In 1910, Congress passed the Organic Act, which authorized the creation of U.S. mines to, quote, increase health, safety, economy, and efficiency in the mining, quarrying, metallurgical, and miscellaneous mineral industries of the country. Basically, these labs focus on fossil energy research and technology. And you will find these labs located in Oregon, Pennsylvania, Arkansas, Kansas, and West Virginia. Many of the other laboratories on that list are home to particle accelerators but they are not the only ones. In fact, this is not the complete list of laboratories that may have this technology. In the U.S. alone, there are 34 labs that have these accelerators. Now, of course, I am not going to go through each one, but I will try to provide you all with an overview of the experimentation happening right here in the U.S. Aside from particle physics research, there are several purposes for building and operating an accelerator, such as developing beam technology to fight cancer, for killing bacteria, for developing advanced materials for products like shrink wrap and diapers. They are even used to develop better fuel technologies for vehicles. So there are often multiple functions for many of these accelerators as there are several different types. But before we get into that, understand that the location of the accelerators is key. With 34 accelerators in the U.S., there is a very good chance some of you may have been standing above one without even knowing it. The Stanford Linear Accelerator Center, or SLAC, has a linear accelerator that runs underneath Interstate 280 in California. Anyone who has ever played football, soccer, or lacrosse at Cornell University was playing 40 feet above an electron storage ring. A circular accelerator that produces beams of X-ray light. We all know that there are quite a few neighborhoods above the LHC at CERN, and they are working on expanding that. Not only does the location of these accelerators matter, but their size as well. In the 1930s, physicists Ernest Lawrence and graduate student Stanley Livingston created what would be known created what is known to be the first circular accelerator. 
but it was less than five inches in diameter. At that tiny size, it could produce up to 80,000 electron volts. Then they were able to build one more than twice that size, producing one million electron volts. Just to give you an idea of the power in that voltage, the LHC can accelerate protons to 6.5 trillion electron volts. So of course, that's not good enough, and they want to go bigger with something that is already 17 miles in circumference. But now that you know how many electron volts the LHC can produce, the highest energy produced from an accelerated particle that has ever been observed is around 300 million trillion electron volts. And as far as we know, an exploding star could not accelerate a particle to that degree of energy. So the source is still unknown. Now there are basically two types of accelerators, linear and circular. And what these machines do is they just produce a beam of charged particles. These particles are usually protons or electrons, or they can be whole elements like uranium or gold, although those are a lot heavier. So what they do in the case of a circular accelerator is they propel a particle through a circular pipe using magnetic energy. And with each pass, the particle strengthens its electric field and the particle moves faster. They keep it going around and around until it reaches the desired speed. Then they take a target from a piece of foil to another particle and put it in the moving particle's path and observe the collision through one of their detectors. The data tells them what particles were produced and the radiation produced. And with this technology, they can aid in the development of a few things. Here in energy.gov it reads, how have particle accelerators improved consumer products? Worldwide, hundreds of industrial processes use particle accelerators from the manufacturing of computer chips to the cross-linking of plastic for shrink wrap and beyond. Electron Beam Applications Center on the modification of material properties such as the alteration of plastics for surface treatment and for pathogen destruction in medical sterilization and food irradiation. Ion Beam Accelerators, which accelerate heavier particles, find extensive use in the semiconductor industry in chip manufacturing, and in hardening the surfaces of materials such as those used in artificial joints. And there are several medical applications for this technology as well. So let's take a look at the bigger picture here. So CERN, as of right now, has the largest accelerator. In other presentations that I have done about CERN, I briefly discussed the possibility of using this technology for shielding. Well, there was an article published in Popular Mechanics. Mind you, this was published back in 2015. But this is interesting. CERN is creating the spaceship shields of the future. To that end, scientists there are testing the use of magnesium diboride superconducting magnets. The magnets are used in the Large Hadron Collider to create ultra-bright particle beams at a low temperature. Used in spacecraft shielding, they would create a sort of magnetosphere around the craft, likely the Orion capsule. Simulating one of the mechanisms that prevents radiation exposure on Earth and in the upper atmosphere, the magnets would be coiled within the body of the craft surrounding it with an artificial magnetic field. So, as myself and several others have stated in the past, the technology used in the LHC, namely their superconducting magnets, have the capability to create an artificial magnetosphere here on the planet, as they would have to test this concept here first. And if their magnets have the power to deflect CMEs or cosmic radiation, they also have the power to disrupt the current magnetic fields that exist naturally. We also know that CERN wants to potentially open a doorway and make contact with another dimension. 
Their scientists have mentioned this before. Researchers at Large Hadron Collider are confident to make contact with parallel universe in days. Now, one of the physicists behind this experiment, Mir Faisal, clearly stated, we predict that gravity can leak into extra dimensions. And if it does, the miniature black holes are produced at the LHC. If we do detect many black holes at this energy, then we are going to know that both gravity's rainbow and the additional dimensions are correct. But see, folks, they are not trying to test the theory of extra dimensions. They already have the evidence of that. They are trying to tap in to another dimension that they know already exists. Faisal and his team, their job is to study miniature black holes and gravity. And these two things are not only important for opening doorways, but for time travel. The reason for the information presented in this edition of what CERN is doing is to give you some insight into some things you may not be aware of, especially in your own backyards. There is no doubt in my mind that these experiments being run in a few of the thousands of particle accelerators around the world are not only affecting the physical environment, but are also affecting people living near these facilities. How many factories and plants have been built over the years that have polluted and devastated communities due to their lack of transparency and greed? And what they are doing here is just a simple lust for power. Oh, they are building that FCC. FCC. The Future Circular Collider. 100 kilometers of magnetic pumping, particle charging, opening the gates to hell power. Can't wait to see what happens when they power that bad boy up. I guess we'll have to stay tuned. There is more to come, folks, and more madness to discuss. Until next time, be sure to visit woodwardentertainment.com and the Woodward Entertainment Store. And as always, my friends, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.